Okay, uh, we got to keep a pretty good pace in this class. Uh, it looks like right now, I'll show you the schedule at the end, but uh, it looks like we looks like we, we might be okay. But right now, we'd be on plan to test next week, either Monday or Tuesday. And right now, the plan is that we would test next week, Tuesday. So I just have to, I have to see where that's at. Now, I just want to be clear, next week, Tuesday, then, then you would have just a little over a week till your next test, right? Because you have a final exam the following Thursday, right? So we would have to cover then four lessons, which would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third, or I'm sorry, so Tuesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. So you would have uh, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday to work on your study guide and finish up the whole thing. So right now that's the plan, okay? And just a fair warning, this final exam is definitely more challenging than your first final exam, okay? So, um, all right. Do you remember this at all? All right, see if this makes sense. Uh, what we want to do is when we try to determine limits, we like to try to take out the largest factor. So in this situation, I have the limit as x goes to infinity of, and I'm going to factor an x squared out of the top by writing x squared times 5 plus 2 over x squared. Y'all good with that? And then what do I take out of the bottom? X, I'm left with 7 plus 1 over X. Limit as X goes to infinity of. Now, notice what I could do. I have the product of two things underneath the square root, correct? So you can take that perfect X squared out and make it X. So X times the root of 5 plus 2 over X squared divided by x times 7 plus 1 over x. And notice in this situation that the x's cancel, and these go to 0. So what are you left with? Square root of 5 over 7. Try the next one on your own. Got four roots of two. We're all good. Okay. Question. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple more examples here. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Uh, limit as x goes to infinity of this one. Uh, anybody know what I'm going to factor out? I will deal with this radical first. So I have the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 times, when I factor the x to the 6th out, what will come out to the front of the radical? x to the 3rd. So 2x to the 3rd times the root of now remember, I factored out an x to the 6th, so what will remain? 1 over x to the 4th plus 1 minus 3x cubed. It turns out that now you can factor something else out. Factor out the x cubed. Factor out the x cubed, we get the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed times 2 roots of 1 over x to the fourth plus 1 minus 3. I want to think through this a little bit. What's going to happen to 1 over x to the fourth? 0, very good. Square root of 1 is 1 times 2. Minus 3, negative 1. So you have negative a very large number cubed. Where is this headed? Negative infinity. Good work. All right. Well, do you guys have this on the bottom? You're missing that, aren't you? 
Okay, so we're going to put that uh, somewhere else later, but actually this is all we'll get through, and then uh, you guys can uh, work on kind of the rest of the assignment here. We're not going to, as I kind of retallied uh, where we need to end up, what we need to do, um, we're going to end up with a little bit of time here, so um, we'll take care of this stuff later. But uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we won't move on to where I was originally planning, but this piece right here, um, you have the limit as x goes negative infinity of negative 3 sine of x. The fact is that sometimes when we look at these type of functions, you um, you don't really have very much of an algebraic argument. And sometimes you need to consider the behavior of the graph. Do you know what the graph of negative 3 sine of x looks like? It is the graph of sine of x. It's not just down. It's flipped. Agreed? And then its amplitude is 3. So it's going to go down to negative 3, up to positive 3. Okay, so it's going to... Thank you for complimenting my graph, Samantha. So again, x is headed towards negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, does this graph ever kind of just center in on, on one value? It doesn't. So what would we say is the limit? The limit does not exist. The next one is not that different. Do you remember what the 5 does? It, very good. It creates, a, it creates a horizontal compression in this situation. The period will happen five times as often. Here we go. So, graph of cosine happens, uh, you know, it, it repeats itself five times as often, repeats itself five times as often. So, as x goes towards infinity, what happens to the graph? Yeah, again, it does not exist. It never zeroes in on one value. Now, sometimes people look at these situations, they say, well, if you have a trigonometric function, then the limit will definitely not exist. And that's that's not true. That's not true. And the last one's a clear example where that doesn't work out like that. And the last one, I can factor something out. Anybody know what I'm going to factor out? I will. As I factor out x, I have the limit as x goes infinity of x times sine of x plus 3. Now, I'm going to consider two scenarios. What is the largest value that sine could be? One. Sine at the largest is one. Everybody agreed? So at the largest, you would have a very large number n times, we would say one plus three is four. Agreed? And the smallest, what is the least value that sine can be? Negative 1. Suppose sine was negative 1, you add 3 to it, you get 2. So we have a very large number times 2. Either way, I'm going to end up with a very large number times another positive number. Agreed? So this limit is infinity. Last two problems, flip your notes over to the very back page, the very last page you have. You should have some room there. And you can uh, list that, uh, find the horizontal symptoms for these. Uh, you're going to need to write these down. You don't have them in your notes. So 
this is one of the questions that will be asked of you on the AP exam. I'm going to, uh, just for investigation's sake, I'm going to type in the square root of 5x squared uh, plus 2. I'm going to divide that by the quantity 7x plus 1. And I'm going to zoom standard. And look at my graph. Okay? Um, tough to see the graph in its entirety. I'm going to check my window and my y values. I'm going to drop them to negative 2 and positive 2. I'm going to look at that graph again. Everybody agree that it's undefined really close to 0 here? In fact, for a value of negative 1 7th, it would be undefined, vertical asymptote. We agree? So it appears that it has what we call n behavior. The n behavior of the function is really the same as the limit as x goes to positive infinity or as x goes towards negative infinity. Watch as I trace this and I take my x values towards positive infinity. We get y is equal to 0 0.31, 0 0.312, 313, 314. 0.315 about. What did you come up with as the limit for this problem right here? So we take the square root of 5 and we divide it by 7. You can see that you get 0 0.319. And it appeared that that's what our graph was approximately headed towards, correct? Look at the other side. Where is that headed towards? The negative value, isn't it? So when you consider horizontal asymptotes, you need to consider two things. Number one, as it heads towards positive infinity. And number two, as it heads towards negative infinity. You, you okay with that? All right. So let's try this out first. Suppose you plugged in a very large negative value. Four minus a very large negative value divided by three times a large negative value plus two. What would you get in the top? What's that? A very large positive number. What would you get in the bottom? A very large negative number. And a very large positive number divided by a very large negative number, is that could be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. So you know that the limit as x goes towards negative infinity is, in fact, going to be negative. You okay with that? Let's try the positive. We'll actually come up with the value here in a second. Let's try the positive. 4 minus a very large positive number divided by 3 times a very large positive number plus 2. What are you going to get in the top? Very large negative number divided by very large positive number. So you can see the limit as x goes towards positive infinity is also going to be negative. Is everybody clear how it's going to be negative in both situations? Very good. Let's now determine the value. What do we factor out of the top? x. Factor out x and you're left with 4 over x minus 1. Factor x on the bottom, you're left with 3 plus 2 over x. What happens to the 4 over x and the 2 over x? What happens to the x over x? What are you left with? Negative 1 third. It ended up to be negative, didn't it? Exactly. So negative 1 third and negative 1 third. And if you were to look at the graph, you would see that, in fact, whether it's headed towards positive infinity or negative infinity, the result will be 1 third, okay, but negative. We good? So it switches here. Let's try the positive one first. You have the square root of 2 times a very large positive squared plus 1 divided by 3 times a large positive minus 5. When we take the square root, um, we say you end up with the principal root, which is the positive. 
So you can see that we get a positive in the top. Agreed? What do you end up with in the bottom? A positive. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So you can see that in this situation, you end up with a positive horizontal asymptote. Sorry, I should add some equal signs over there. Um, so now we'll try the negative one. Notice what happens here. When you square the negative, it becomes positive. So you still have a positive underneath the square root sign, don't you? And can you take the square root of a positive? You sure can. So we end up with a positive in the numerator. In the denominator, though, we end up with a negative, don't we? So it's going to be negative. Let's find out what it is. What do you factor out of the top? x squared. And when you bring that x squared out in front of the radical, what does it become? It becomes x times the root of 2 plus 1 over x. At the bottom, I factor out x, and I'm left with 3 minus 5 over x. You can see that the x's cancel. It's 0 here. And you get 0 here. And so you get the root of 2 over 3. Root of 2 over 3. You can see in one situation it's negative, and the other situation it's positive. So the key is, when they ask for what are the horizontal asymptotes, you need to consider both negative infinity and positive infinity. Uh, when I was doing some of the multiple choice questions on, on previous AP exams, this is one I, I got wrong. Usually about out of the 50 or so questions, um, the worst I've scored is probably, I don't know, five or six wrong. The best I've scored is, is one wrong. But I remember I got one of these questions wrong, and it, it very much angered me. Because I didn't consider what, what about when it goes to negative infinity. I only considered the positive. So consider both directions. And that's all we have for today.